The Department of Mines, Industry Regulation and Safety would like to acknowledge the Yilga Telengi people, past and present, who occupy the land where this incident occurred. On Sunday, the 23rd of October 2022, a road train was filled with ammonium nitrate emulsion at Quinana. After filling, it then departed for Gru Yia mine site. The driver rested overnight near Leonora, approximately 300 kilometers from the incident scene. After completing his pre start checks on the morning of the 24th of October, the driver continued the journey to Gru Yia mine site. The driver was traveling on a gravel road, when at approximately 9 a.m. he joined two other trucks near Cosmo Newberry, a remote Aboriginal community. At 9.30 a.m., the driver notices black smoke coming from the rear wheels of the rear tanker. He notifies the other vehicles in the convoy by two-way radio. It is thought that the tire fire was initiated from a leaking air supply line, causing brakes to lock on and overheat. The driver pulls over the vehicle and attempts to extinguish the tire fire. At one point, he lies on his back to get better access to extinguish the flames. Soon after, the airbag suspension bursts on the truck, causing it to drop in height, at which point the flames are now approximately 45 centimeters above the mudguards. The driver radios the two other trucks nearby, explaining that he is going to leave the scene. The other vehicles notify emergency services of the situation. The driver disconnects the rear tanker trailer. He observes the smoke is thick and black. At approximately 9.50 a.m., the driver leaves the scene and sets up a barricade on the eastern side, blocking traffic at the turnoff to the mine site. At this stage, a hole is beginning to form in the shell of the aluminium tanker trailer. At 10.05 a.m., the driver observes white smoke coming from the fire. The ammonium nitrate emulsion flows onto the ground. It becomes constrained by the topography of the road and pools beneath the tanker trailer. It is affected by the fire and starts to decompose, producing white smoke. The mine emergency response team arrives at 10.50 a.m. At approximately 11.05 a.m., the emergency response team enters the barricaded area to within 1.3 kilometers of the fire. They warn and escort out a motorcycle and a car that enter the area from the western side. While within the barricaded area, the emergency response team observes the tires at the front of the tanker trailer are alight and flames are engulfing it from the ground. The smoke plume is approximately 20 meters high and the color is changing from black to white. At 11.33 a.m., there is an explosion. The emergency response team see this and capture photos. The smoke plume is estimated to be one kilometer in height. Following the explosion, the scene was examined by first responders and then department investigators. The tanker trailer was completely destroyed. A crater was formed in the road as a result of the blast. It was large and shallow, with the deepest point being approximately 1.1 meters deep. The fire melted a hole in the aluminium tanker, causing the ammonium nitrate emulsion to flow onto the ground. The fire decomposed the ANE and burnt the fuel component of the emulsion. It was molten sensitized ammonium nitrate, which then exploded. The size of the blast is estimated to be 1 to 3 tons of TNT equivalent. At 50 meters from the epicenter of the explosion, 7 meter high trees were snapped at ground level. Aluminium and steel shrapnel was found scattered predominantly to the southeast of the road, indicating the explosion occurred towards the rear of the tanker trailer. Following the investigation, a number of recommendations were developed to improve the safe transport of ammonium nitrate emulsion and similar products. These include control measures to prevent and mitigate tire fires, which may lead to an explosion. For a copy of the investigation report, please visit the department's website and search A&E Tanker Explosion.